now we shift to talk about Gibbs phase rule. Gibbs phase rule just as an equation to tell us how many independent uh, intensive properties we need to determine to fix the state of a multi-component multi-phase system. So think of P being the number of phases. So if you have liquid only, P is 1. Liquid and vapor, P is 2. Liquid vapor solid, P is 3, and we really don't go beyond that, right? Um, so now how, what would be N? N would be the number of components. If it was pure water, N would be 1. If it was water and ammonia, N would be 2. Water, ammonia, oxygen, N would be 3. So you see how you have P and N. Y, think of Y as a mole fraction. So you could have the mole fraction in the one phase and the mole fraction in the other phase. What is the mole fraction of water in the liquid phase? What's the mole fraction of water in the vapor phase for this multi-phase, multi-component system? Now we do know that if I add the mole fraction of, of component A plus B plus all the components, if I add them all up, right, there's a little dot, dot, dot right here. They have to be one, so there's really only n minus 1 independent mole fractions because the sum over all of them has to equal 1. So uh, if there's n minus 1 independent mole fractions for each phase. So you have the n minus 1 mole fractions that describe the mixture in the first phase and then in the second phase. So that's what we mean here. It's n minus 1 independent mole fractions for each of the phases. So if you multiply the number of phases times n minus 1, you get the total number of degrees of freedom to characterize the multi-component, multi-phase system. Uh, just in its mole fractions, you add to it temperature and pressure. That's two more. So you would have two, one for temperature, one for pressure. And then you have P times N minus 1 would be the total number of degrees of freedom that characterize that system. Well, we had a discussion of the equilibrium constraints. So we know that mu sub A in one phase must be equal to mu sub A in the other phase. Well, let's say you had three phases. Well, then mu sub A in the first phase must equal to mu sub A in the third phase. And what happens if I had a second component, B? That's mu sub b first phase equal to mu sub b second phase. So these are constraints from the chemical equilibrium. And our mixture is going to be in equilibrium. So we find we have uh, n components. And we have p minus 1 constraints for each of those components. See, if you had three phases, you had two constraints. So P minus 1 conditions or constraints. So the total number of constraints is N times P minus 1. A little abstract. Hopefully you're following this discussion. But what we do is we put it together and we say, okay, for a multi-component, multi-phase, non-reacting system, you have F. I want to know the number of independent intensive properties needed to be specified to fix that state. Well, it would be... P times N minus 1 plus 2. That would be the total number of those uh, descriptions to fix the state. This was thinking about the Ys. This was thinking about temperature and pressure. And then you take off or subtract the number of constraints from the chemical equilibrium, the mu, the chemical potential relations. You do a little bit of algebra and you find that the number of independent intensive properties is 2 plus n minus p. That's what you have to or somehow figure out or specify to fix the complete description of the multi-component, multi-phase system. Let's solve this problem. How many independent intensive properties they're asking for f? What is f? The number of independent intensive properties that are required to calculate the specific enthalpy if I really wanted to know the specific enthalpy of a liquid solution of water and ammonia so I have not a two-phase 
solution, but a liquid only. You're off. John, thank you. So P is one. N, water and ammonia, N is two. So if I wanted to know the number of F, the number of independent intensive properties, so I'm able to calculate a property like specific enthalpy using Gibbs phase rule, 2 plus N minus P. Let's substitute the numbers. 2 plus 2 minus 1. How many do I need? 3. So for example, if I needed to calculate the enthalpy, it would be a function of what type of three things? I have a liquid solution of water and ammonia. Temperature, pressure, and a mole fraction of either water or ammonia. One of them, you know, if one is 60, the other is 40. So they're not, so let's just say the mole fraction of ammonia. You're done. See how you would use that? And then that would allow you to calculate that other property known as enthalpy. This is an application of the Gibbs phase rule. Another application. How many independent intensive properties, that's how, 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 many, how large is F, exist for a pure substance in an equilibrium solution with the solid, liquid, and vapor phases present? So how many phases are present? Three. How many components are there? Why is it one? Because they said it was a pure substance, not a mixture of water, ammonia, or whatever. It could be pure water. It could be pure ammonia. It could be pure carbon dioxide, whatever it is. So you have three phases in equilibrium for a pure substance. So let's apply Gibbs phase rule. It's what you have 2 plus N minus P, 2 plus 1 minus 3. What do you get? Whoa, hold it. What does that mean? That means if I wanted to know the enthalpy, true, uh, it's a function of what? What's going on here? Is a function of nothing? It's the triple point. So basically, the enthalpy of saturated liquid is just the enthalpy of saturated liquid. It's it's a number. It's a constant. It doesn't, you know, you specify the substance. It's water, and the triple point temperature and pressure are fixed. I don't I don't have any more degrees of freedom if I said go give me the saturated uh, liquids um, enthalpy, you got it. It's just a number. There's no, it's not going to change if I change anything because it's only one point, the triple point. Likewise, H of uh, uh, G for the saturated vapor, the vapor component, and then for the solid, you could use what H of S is just a number.